All right, time to draft. Oh yeah. All right, so a pretty decent pack. Um, Harnessed by Force is a really strong rare and definitely something that makes you want to kind of go into red and just kind of like steal games out of nowhere. But I happen to be pretty biased against red. If you've seen some other videos, I tend to stick away from it when there's strong cards in other colors, such as Nesting Game Warden or Warwing Siren. Actually, I'm going to grab this Warwing Siren. I know I just did a draft that was uh, blue-white. If you're watching this, you probably watched that one because I think I'm putting them together. Not too sure. But anyway, um, and uh, so I know it might be a little redundant, but I still think it's just a really good card. It's kind of something I'm f really enjoying. Nixon Fusion and Freak has chosen are the good black commons. Those are the ones you want to be looking for if they're coming around, you know, fourth or fifth pick. It means it's probably a little bit open. Because um, there's not a lot of great black, so these are the second tier of the other dudes. Hubris is fine. Um, Flare of Horns, I think, is going to be fine. Next Weaver's great by two colors. I'm just taking a color preference here that's a little less powerful than the rare that was there. Uh, Nessium Game Wardens again, though, I think is the most powerful card. Blade Tusk Boar would be what I would take if I had uh, first picked the red card. There's just no good blue here to stick with the War Wing Siren. I could try to force the archetype that this is good in with the Eagle of the Watch. Mortal Obstacle is also good as well, but I think the Nessium Game Warden is just that much better. This is the one where you get the card, right? Where X is the number of four. Yeah, you generally get a creature card off of it, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to go there. I see him Game Warden. I like green quite a bit. Blue-green is also quite fine. I'd be happy with both of those outcomes. Ooh, Feast of Dreams is really quite good. Alright. So, no blue. So, Warming Siren, adios, probably. Uh, another Blade Test Bar would go with the second one I would have if I had started red, and I wouldn't be bad with that, wouldn't be sad with that set. I think Feast is just so strong it's worth grabbing, and it's a good black card. If I wanted to just stay on one color, I'd take the O card dry, it's a good 2-3, and it's a nice upside. I do think the strategy that is best in this format is kind of pick a color and stay with the color, which I'm obviously not doing at the moment. Uh, so I think I need to right now decide black or green and kind of start going with it. Blood Crazed Hot Blight is nice, and I could get into this weird black-blue aggro deck, which is kind of cool. Likewise, Colossal Heroics is, is a, just a really good um, Strive card. You know, I like black. I want to go black. Let's see what happens with black. I'm going to take the Blood Crazed Hot Blight. If we get a couple of these, I'll be stoked. Feast of James is really powerful, and we'll get a lot of black in the last pack, no matter what. So I want to carve out a niche in black right now. Ideally, a somewhat aggressive niche with the Blood Crazed Hot Blight. Not really where you want to be going, like, to be forcing, I should say, in black, since you're not really guaranteed that archetype. It's not that deep in an aggressive sense. But... Still just a good two drop. Mm, Nick's Born Infusion, happy to grab. Don't think this dictate matters. Quarry is a pretty powerful seven drop, right? Flurry the Grove Dancer would have gone on the green build. Yeah, I'm happy with my black. Situational removal, good removal, decent two drop. All right, so if we're going to go in a possibly aggressive build with Flyers and Heroic Dudes, do I want more removal or just another good creature? I think they're pretty comparable and both good, Johnny's Presence being the best card in the pack. I don't think the black cards are worth taking right now in order to just stay on that black path I was mentioning, so I'm kind of happy to jump back into a blue kind of thing. And I think we'll go with the Cloaked Siren over Pinned Earth, because if I'm going to be going black, I'm going to have removal spells. And that means I just want to have some nice flyers to go with it all. Actually, I don't remember it's there. I told myself going into this draft, I would um, try to just like kind of identify one color and stick to that one color. And I'm not doing that in case you haven't noticed. Do I want a 1 3? Not really. I think I'm going to try this aspect. No, it's just got to be such an easy two for one. I mean, none of the cards are really good. Tormented Thoughts, I think, is horrible. Impressive Rays and Renowned Weaver, probably both more playable than the others. 
Yeah, I'll take a two drop. I might need it. I just think the aspect of Gorgon, is that what it was? The plus one, plus three death touch? Just too easy for a two for one with bounce and the removal. And I mean, it's just a classic aura issue. Aerial formation could be pretty good. I already have two heroic guys. Nice way to finish out draft. I think green would have been also pretty decent. I'm not too sure what was right in this. I'm still figuring out the format. Being fairly new. We'll take the God Hunter Octopus. I might need a, a big beefy dude in a, a blue black build. Not where I want to be necessarily, but I'm fine with that. I pretty much am just forcing these colors now. It would seem to me at least. So I am fine with hiding the green. Since there's other kind of like average green. Hopping around that table. Oh, drafting is so much fun. Just finished all my exams for the semester. No more school for two weeks. Okay, I guess I'll take Counterman just to cut the color, though. This isn't the deck that I want with it, but it could get there. I actually think Mortal Obst Obstinacy is pretty decent in the blue-white uh, heroic deck, or even the red-white heroic, but in a white heroic deck, it triggers it, and destroy enchantments pretty, pretty awesome most of the time. Rise of the Eagles, again, might make it, probably not. Thunderfoot and Stonewise Fortifier are way better cards. They're very, like, solid fillers, whereas Rise of the Eagles is just a little um, over-costed for what it actually does. I'll cut an Oppressive Raise over the Pensive Minotaur, because I don't think the Minotaur is going to matter against my deck as much. Not playing the 6-drop, ideally. Okay. In hindsight, I think I was a little tempted by the Feast of Dreams. I think I should have stuck to what my game plan was, which was kind of force a color early, carve the niche out. I think that's kind of how the draft goes in Journey to Nyx and Born of the Gods. Um, Theros is deep enough to where you just kind of see what open and you're fine, but I think if you kind of force around a color a little bit, you should be cool in these colors. Oh, I don't want to say force, maybe I'm, I'm not articulating well. I think it was spread over about power a little too strong. Ooh, that's a really strong card. But I'm so far from white. Someone's just gonna have to grab it. So I want Harpy or Area Worshippers. Both pretty solid. Take the Area Worshippers. It's one less. Yeah, it's one less mana, so I kind of like it. It means I want to be thinking about quick evasion and stuff. I would love this trying to come around. This is actually a pretty decent Born of the Gods pack, considering how weak they can be. But look, like Centaur, Wolf, of course Eidolon, Demlock. Yeah, lots of good stuff in the pack. Bioblight, yes please! Oh wait, there's an Eater of Hope. I actually think I want the Bioblight more. Yes, this is a, like a, a six power flyer, and it can kind of protect itself, but it's a seven drop, and I think this Bioblight is just that powerful. How silly am I that at this point in Born of the Gods packs, I don't even know the pick here. I like Bioblight. What can I say? What can I say? Goodbye, Countermand. Adapt is fine. Seventh Storm is good, but not really what this deck wants. I think the Nyxborn Shrine is a little bit more on par with what I'm looking for. With the uh, ability to bestow and make things bigger later. Might even get an Oracle's Insight back. I don't think a lot of decks want this. Is the second one, kind of early in the packs, so that might come around. Yep, I'm happy with that. Although, had I known there'd be two of those insights, I might have actually grabbed both and start building a more defensive sort of deck to go with it, but oh well. Necrobite? Do I have combat tricks? I have my three removal spells. 
Yeah, I kind of want combat tricks. So I can kind of bash through. All I have is an aerial formation. I'm not too sure that's what I want. These guys are dorks. Dorkity dork dorks. I don't want the Felhide Brawler. And I don't need this 5 drop. Yep. Necrobite it is. Hello, really good card. Really good card. Mediocre cards in my colors. Disciple, Stratus Walk, Weight of the Underworld. I could take the Stratus Walk in anticipation of putting on like a warrior or blood crazed hoplite of some sort. I don't think I need to wait because it's kind of redundant for some of the stuff I already have. I think I'm going to see a Disciple because those tend to table pretty late. So I'll take the Stratus Walk now because it's less likely I see her in the draft. I'll probably get the Disciple, like I said. Some way, somehow. I think I need a glass of wine. That might have to happen in the near future. I'm happy for a servant. Yeah. I'll take it. It works. Definitely over this dude. Fairies Band Raiders, good green card. Well, he should have been green. Totally should have been green, brah. Where the fist asphyxiates? Shouldn't I have those by now? Wow. Same bad shizzy old cards. Another hero's podium. Someone could have gone really in on that. Am I going to play any of these? Not really, right? I think I'll take a four drop because maybe it makes it, even though I, I can't see it ever making it. But I said I want to be kind of aggressive, right? <laughs> Not what I had in mind. Wow, green, green, and more green. Oh, I guess we'll just take... I mean, I don't want this 5-drop. I don't want another drifter, so we'll just cut something. There's no point to have these things still around. Nyxborn Wolf. Is a Marsh Mist Titan playable in this pack? One, two... In this deck? One, two... Three... Not really. Just taking the good card. There's just no way I'm playing the Titan, even if I get a bunch of like really sweet blacky things later. Ooh, Divination's good. Definitely the kind of deck that wants it. Over the other Serpent. Another big ol' fatty. Good at that point in the pack. I don't think it's that awesome in the format, of course. But, hey, considering I just whiffed on a couple other picks, that's an actual playable for this deck. yippity yo yay I'm hiding these. I don't want to play them if I don't have to. Oracle's Insight. Boink! Mm, none of these matter. Boink! Mm, Charging Badger. Honorary Shitty Mascot. Don't know if this is making the deck yet, but it might. Rare Drafting. Yoink! My color. Aw, yeah! That's what I want. Alright, Oracle's Insight is good with Servant right now. Good with area worshippers right now. Yeah, probably make the deck. Probably make the deck. So, do I want to go super D? I'm not too sure. Thoughtseize! How much are you worth? You're still worth a, a, a bunch, aren't you? Yeah, we're taking Thoughtseize. It's still worth like four to five tickets at the moment. Basically, if it's worth a pack or more, I tend to rare draft at that point. There's nothing super strong for the deck. There's certainly like cards that would make the cut. Little Harpy. This might be an ordeal deck. I'm doing kind of one of the things I don't recommend doing in drafting where I'm kind of splitting strategies. I have the uh, couple of like kind of more aggressive cards and then a couple more, you know, long term game cards. It's definitely an aggressive version of that. I'd probably just take the Blood Till Harpy. No, I'd probably take the ordeal. That's a big enough upside. But for now, we'll take the Thought Seize and plan on not playing it. Though it could definitely be played. Wow, Nessie and Asp. Maybe a Splash Nessie. Oh, just a Griptide. Silly me. I was looking at these other stupid cards. But no, Griptide's awesome. Thank you. Dark Betrayal. For the sideboard. Might even table. Not a single good card here. I have those stupid six drops. Is the Monarch Wall going to be decent? I have one instant, two instants. Three instants, four, five, could be good. 
six. I'm gonna take the monoc wall. It's not great. I don't have any fives though. I just have those hidden sixes, and I think I'll be getting some kind of removal spell back. Otherwise, I just could have phalanx leader, but I'd rather just have like good sideboard or like decent cards. Dark betrayal. I m should maybe take here. Not too. Not not entirely sure, but could have been a better thing to do. Really surprised there's not a lot of black flowing right now because it's so deep in Theros. But maybe I did misread uh, some of the early picks in the first packs. Is Trident Fortune Hunter actually going to draw me cards? One. I don't even know what that card did. Two. Three. Yeah, I have three heroic triggers. Not going to really draw me cards. That actually means that the Felid Minotaur is a bit better. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? I could draw, I could get a few more, but I don't think it's going to be enough to really make it worth it. So I'm taking the 2 3. Train tactics. There we go. Heroic trigger. Glad I just passed up the uh, Fortune Hunter. No, it's actually fine. I will take a Train tactics because it is kind of cool. I wouldn't mind an Aqueous form, considering the area worshippers. But I'm not going to take it over just a really nice solid combat trick. Second intrusion is also an option. Yeah, I might actually take the Psychic Intrusion over the Aquas form if the Triton Tactics weren't here, but I think the Triton Tactics are going to be good enough in what I'm trying to do here. Normally I want Read the Bones, but you will notice I'm only at 9 creatures. I do think I want something like a Prussian Chimera to help close out a game. And I do already have a Divination. Tough call. I'm going to go with this guy because I need more creatures. Oh, Voyage is in late. Awesome. Very happy. Very, very happy. Here's a Prussian Chimera. Something to note. They do tend to go around later. Vaporkin would make the deck get some early damage in, and then when it gets kind of outclassed, just put an Oracle's Insight on it. Well, I'm definitely taking it over a Benthic Giant, so we'll build, deal with the build later. Hey, look, all the mediocre cards that I didn't take tabled. Uh, Blood to Harpy, definitely. Don't need another Felid Minotaur. Maybe we are aggressive. Maybe I can do an aggressive build here. Nah, there's just too many cards that aren't. We'll see. Do I want a Viper's Kiss over a Return Centaur? Do I need more 4 drops? It's just a good sidey card. Put her in the sideboard, friend. Put her there. Um, we're going to cut this Chosen by Heliod. Because that's a decent card. Which do I want for my sideboard? Benthic Giant. Benthic Giant! I have plenty of flyers. I don't need the other deuter. Yoink. Yoink. Give me my land and let's build a deck. Come on. Come on, Zs. Let's go. You guys don't care what the last card is, right? I can pause, right? I'm pausing. Pausing right now. Where's the last card? There it is. The mount. Okay. Here's the build with the different option sideboards. We're at 22 playables. We want one more right now. It's not an 18 land deck, I don't think. Um, we only have 12 creatures, so we're a little light on creatures. Thought Seas could actually be on the in the main deck, but I don't think it's that great and limited. Um, and actually, like our spells are actually pretty decent. We have two decent combat tricks, uh, a lot of great removal spells. This divination's in here because I think I want it. I don't really have that many great other creatures to bring in. Um, Oracle's Insight as well. I think it would be a little bit grindy. I think it could get there. And we do have enough early drops that and removal spells where I think we're going to be fine. We're not going to get too blown up by early game. Yeah, I think I just want to throw in one more creature. And I have this 4 drop that sucks. Um, and these 6 drops. So I'm just going to throw in good old solid Benthic Giant. I could take the God Hunter Octopus, but you just get one more power plus possibly not attacking. Whereas I'd rather uh, just have the 4 or 5 with Hexproof. Um, and be able to attack or block whoever I want. And I, this is not a deck that cares about Rise of Eagles, like, at all. Yeah, I like that. 10-7 seems about right, except some of our blacks a little early. Ooh, and we do have Bio Blight. What's a 9-8 look like? Do we need 9? I might even flop it around. Because, yeah, it's like our early game is all black. It's only late that we need more blue. We're not that much more heavy blue. Yeah, we're going to flip-flop. 
mainly because so much early, all of our blacks early, we want to make sure we hit that nice. And we do have um, the, uh, where is it, the bio blight that we want to be able to get nice and down. And the rest of it, we just need one blue for except for the chimera. So yeah, that's wonderful. I like it. Alrighty, round one.